But now we have to check. Is the function decreasing from 0 to this? No. From a zero, zero from zero to a negative number, the function yeah. is decreasing. So now from when the first derivative is positive, what should the function do? Increase. Increase. Good. Is it increasing from negative uh, point 0.1 roughly to infinity? Is it increasing? Yes. Absolutely. What type of point is negative one fourth comma negative? So negative one fourth comma approximately negative point zero nine two. What type of point is this? A minimum. Very good. Relative minimum. This is a relative minimum. So it turns out that the critical number that we determined turned out into an extrema, point of extrema, into a relative minimum. And what is the point? Kind of difficult, because this is an approximation, but negative one-fourth, approximately negative 0 0.092. So from 0 to a negative number, the function is decreasing, and that's supported by the sign of the first derivative. From a negative number to infinity, that is supported by the sign of the derivative. It's the function is increasing. Again, please do not graph. We are not ready to graph. They are asking us to graph, but that's not possible at this point. Any questions? So you understand this table, and I'm kindly asking you to use this table as I show it to you, and we will add another row here. I promise only three. First derivative, the function in the middle, and the last row will be the second derivative, which will tell us something else about the function. So one more time, what does the first derivative say about this function? When it's increasing, when it's decreasing? When it's increasing, when it's decreasing? And if it has a relative max or a relative min? A lot. OK, I would like to look at a word problem like optimizing revenue, let's say 67 on page 277. And I think I forgot to mention this was 29 on page 277. So let's read the question. It's entitled, as I said, optimizing revenue. OK, when we talk about optimization, Optimization is a big branch of mathematics, like trig, like calculus, like uh, pre-calculus, like uh, trigonometry, I already said, algebra, um, linear algebra, etc., etc. Optimization is a huge field. It deals with max min. Optimize a function. Find its absolute maximum or relative maximum, relative min. OK, a hotel owner notices that she rents Y rooms per night when the price is X dollars per room. Y is rooms per night, and X is price um, per room. X is in dollars, of course, dollars per room. And Y is given to us as 200 minus 2X. Find the revenue, the total revenue generated by uh, per night when the price of each room is X dollars. So in the first question, first question has nothing to do with calculus, right? In part A, they're asking us to find the total revenue. So any suggestions? We have um, Y is the number of rooms rented out per night, and X is the price per room. So how do we determine the total revenue? Anyone? Any suggestions for the total revenue? 
x times y. Very good. So this is x. Excellent. 200 minus 2x. Yes, in descending order, correct order, always negative 2x squared plus 200x. So this is indeed a total revenue. In part B, find the relative extremum or point of extrema of R and interpret this result. In other words, they're asking us to find the relative max. Okay, so what is the first step towards finding the relative max? So, find critical numbers. If we find critical numbers, then we have to do the table analysis to see if they turn into a max or min. So again, what is the first step? Do we set it equal to zero? In order to find a critical number, remember critical numbers come from two sources. So I have to find f prime. That's my first step. I cannot set anything to zero before I find f prime. And I'm not setting the function equal to zero. So critical numbers come, I'm not saying you said that, I'm just, I just want to review this. So critical numbers come from f prime being zero or f prime being undefined with all this information. Okay, so regardless of what we do next, we have to first find the derivative. So can anyone give us the derivative? Oops, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. R prime of x. Two x plus two hundred. Careful, one more time. Maybe I didn't catch everything you said. Sorry about that. I said two x plus two hundred. Maybe it's just x plus two hundred. It's um, minus four x plus two hundred. Very good. Is that clear, Mallory? Yes. Perfect. So now we have two possibilities. R prime of x to be undefined and r prime of x to be zero. Can anyone say anything about r prime of x being undefined? Possible, not possible, where? No. No. It's defined. That's not possible. This is a polynomial function. Good. So can anyone give us the x for which this is zero? I'm hoping that you will write negative 4x plus 200 equals 0, move 200, and get 200 over, so you get yeah, 50. Positive. And you get 50, and 50 is x, so this is price. Okay, so this is a critical number. Is it a max or a min? I don't know. I do know because I know from algebra what type of function this is and how it looks like. But I don't want to assume anything. In calculus, I have to show the work. So in number two, I have um, x. We're talking about price. So I cannot go to negative infinity. I have r prime. And I have r of x. The critical number we found was 50, where the first derivative is 0. Let's find the sign, left and right. So in the derivative function, please plug in 1 and tell me the sign, and then plug in 100 and tell me the sign. When you plug in 1, what is the plug sign? Plug in 1, you get a positive. Excellent. Perfect. And when you plug in 100, what do you get? Negative. Exactly. So now, what should this be? This point, which I don't have yet. I have to plug it in the function to determine the revenue, which is the maximum revenue, when the price is 50. So back to... This should be positive. Uh, but we have to plug it in. So in y equals, I have the function which is... It should be zero, right? No. 
So no. negative 2x squared and plus 200x. We'll talk about the maximum revenue. It better not be zero. So when we plug in 50. I just realized we were putting it in the original one, not the not R prime. Oh, this is R, right. So it's 5,000. Yeah, okay. This is the Y value. I will also plug in zero, which I know I get zero. And um, again, I cannot plug in infinity, but obviously that's good. So from zero to 5,000, 5, obviously it's positive. And from that moment on, it should always be decreasing. You can, you can see that. We know the graph of this function, but you can plug in, uh, let's say, oh, I didn't mean that. Uh, let's plug in 1,000. 10,000. Okay, so we see it's a humongous negative number. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what that is. I, I have to count the zeros. So obviously this is negative infinity. So this is very clear. From 0 to 5,000, yes, supported by the sign. From 5,000 to negative infinity, yes, supported by the sign. The point 50, 5,000 must be the relative max. So we will advise the owner of this um, inn or whatever it is, hotel. Sir, ma'am, if you decide to charge per room $50, you're going to get this revenue. Find the relative extreme amount of R and interpret this result. So that's what it is. Any questions? Please try to understand the table. Many reasons why I'm using this table. Number one, we can easily check our results. So let's say, for example, I get here um, negative 50, whatever. Then I realize that I have an error. How come the, the derivative is positive, but from 0 to negative 50, this is going down? So I have a conflict of interest here. If this row does not go well with this row, then I know something is wrong. OK, uh, moving on. The next section, we will talk about the second derivative. So let's talk about the second derivative. We know what the first derivative says about the function. But now let's learn what the second derivative says about the function. And no, we're not going to go to the third or anything else. That's it. So in 3.2, we're going to talk about the second derivative. OK. So again, in summary, let's go back for just a blink for the first derivative. Two major things. The first derivative says if it's positive, the function is increasing. If it's negative, the function is decreasing. This sequence of signs, positive, zero, or undefined, negative, this gives a relative max. Negative, zero, or undefined, positive, gives a relative min. That's what the first derivative says about the function. OK, the second derivative will also say two different things. Super important things, actually, like with the first derivative. OK, so. When the second derivative is 0 and changes sign, like positive 0, negative, or negative 0, positive, this point, let's say x equals to that number, this becomes a point of inflection. That's number one. Number two, if the second derivative is positive, the function is concave upward.
when the second derivative is negative, same thing, but concave downward. So one more time. If this equation has solutions, and at those solutions or solution, the function second derivative changes sign, then this becomes a point of inflection. If the second derivative is positive, the function is concave upward. If the second derivative is negative, the function is concave downward. Let's illustrate all this in one little graph, everything. Okay, so as you see, the function is concave downward. At this point, it changes concavity. And all of a sudden now, it's concave upward. This is what it's called IP, point of inflection, or inflection point, IP, inflection point. from concave downward to concave upward. Not even the calculator can do this. You can. Now, you'll see. The calculator cannot tell you this. Okay, what is the other option? Of course, same thing. From concave upward to concave downward. So this is still an IP. Inflection point from concave upward to concave downward. This all this information is given by the second derivative. So I like to choose, we're not graphing. We are not ready to graph. They are just forcing this, but this, we're not ready for that. Okay, so um, let's look on page 291. Any questions for me? I know this is a lot, but you'll see how this works. I have a question that might be stupid. <laughs> Nothing is stupid. Uh, is there ever going to be a chance that I guess it would both be, I mean, it would just be completely concave downward or concave upward? Yes, of course. And would that make it still an IP or no? No. Because I guess, it, oh, I guess. If it doesn't change concavity, yes, if it doesn't change concavity, it's not an IP. Okay. So this is the quadratic function. This has a relative max. And, um, and also absolute max as well, but this does not change concavity. Okay. It's always up um, downward. Same thing here. So okay. for example, x cubed, x cubed changes concavity from opening downward on this side to opening upward on this side. That's why this is an IP. Okay. So this sense. is y equals x cubed. Now, um, I always encourage my students to ask any question. No question is silly because it really helps me um, incorporate potential questions. So once, once I hear a question, many times I even take notes and I say, okay, don't forget to say this so it's clear. So if you don't ask questions, then I... I cannot add to my list of, uh, or I cannot become a better professor. Okay, so um, uh, let's look at um, a, I don't want to look at a quadratic, but, um, but also maybe we should start with a quadratic because it's easy. So let's start with easy. So page 291, uh, let's start with 11. Because I, I'm going to sign 12. So that's why I'm always choosing. So f of x equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. <clears throat> so they want a lot. Okay, so let me see if I can. I'm going to read this to you anyway. So it says, uh, give the coordinates of any critical points. Classify each point as a relative max or relative min or none of the above. 
Identify the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. Give the coordinates of any points of inflection. Identify intervals where the function is concave up or concave down. Sketch the graph. No. Yes, you can sketch the quadratic, but not the rest. So I don't want any sketch right now. It's not, we're not ready for that. I just want to emphasize the table and, and work on this. And yes, of course, we will graph. And that's what we are trying to do. That's the first application here. OK. So first of all, we establish the domain. Can anyone give us a oh, OK, sorry. I'm going to change this into a lowercase f. Can anyone give us a domain of this function? All reals. Absolutely, it's polynomial. Perfect. Why I don't want to graph just yet? Because I want to, us to understand the table, and I don't want to determine x and y intercepts and limits and all sorts right now. I'm interested in understanding what's happening here. Good. <coughs> Zero has to be in the table. Um, we're going to start by studying the, the first derivative. So can anyone give us the first derivative for this function? Six, six.